Today is all about cold cracker janitorial services. What's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. So it's not like we're running a new janitorial company. Uh, we have an upcoming class, Advanced Bushcraft, which I'm super excited about. And then the Bushman class, oh, I'm so pumped about. I love, I love these classes this time of the year. Plus it's so nice. Look how like, look at that. How can you not want to be outside when it looks like that out and the weather is beautiful it's like in the 50s it's great absolutely great so today i'm just going to take everybody around because people ask all the time like we want camping videos we want videos of you just doing shit and here we're gonna just go do some shit so um it's pretty good but uh there's a lot of good stuff happening here at the school property i want to show everybody and if you've been a past student and i show you this stuff you can be like oh, i remember where this and this and this all this good stuff so we're going to do that but when you get ready for a class Class, there's always a lot of work behind the scenes. I don't think people realize that. So I usually take a full day of prep to get all our, what we call our class bins. That's all the stuff we're gonna need to run the class and get all the food and get everything cleaned up at the school property and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna have you uh, tag along for me for some of that stuff and show you some of the stuff we're doing. But funny little story. So you're gonna see me doing some stuff in the rain today. This is why yesterday I came and I'm like, I'm gonna clean some stuff up. We've been getting all of the remaining bits and pieces of trash and like dumped bricks. Cause this property was a nightmare of just mayhem of trash, tires, junk, unmanicured land when we got it and we finally have it very, 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 very clean. Random pieces here or there we have. So point was I was pulling some old tires. I thought I had all the tires off the property but I found five. Pulling them out, first four go good. The fifth one I pull out and I'm like, wow, something flew up my nose. Literally, I'm like, what is that? Stung yellow jacket, stung on the face, stung on bottom lip. So my lip and face started, it's still, it's killing me today to the point my teeth hurt, it hurts up in my eye. It was, it was brutal. So uh, I'm like, no filming. I'm all like, well, I can't film. So uh, yeah, so that was a nice day yesterday. Today, super rainy, but I gotta get the work done. So we're gonna start the cabin, get this a little bit cleaned up, and then take it down to yurt. We gotta put the wall up on the yurt, and then I'm gonna show you a couple cool things. Maybe not in that order, but we'll get all that stuff done today. Here's a little pro tip for everybody. If you build a backwoods cabin, okay, the inside of the cabin's gonna get full of stuff and you're gonna try to sweep it out, it's gonna hit the door sill. Have a removable door sill. It makes life that much better, so much better. And just like that, the cabin is magically cleaned with just a little bit of muscle. <laughs> Literally, as long as you keep up after it, it seems like it's always really, really good. And speaking of magic, we're gonna talk about today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. I even have my, my Magic Spoon with me to eat it because it's still early and I didn't eat too much for breakfast. So today's choice for my cereal is apple cinnamon. Uh, Magic Spoon has a ton of different flavors, all delicious. I usually get the big variety pack. Um, blueberry I love, frosted I love, um, the fruity one I love, all of them. They're all so good. Uh, So if you're like me and you're looking for a little snack out on the trail or a little meal when you're in a backwoods cabin or maybe your backwoods yurt or even when you're at home, Magic Spoon might be it for you. Remember like those Saturday mornings when you'd sit in front of TV just killing cereal as a little kid? So we don't get to do that too much anymore. Maybe you do. I don't get to do that. So I'm always out and about. So I like something that's nutritious and good to go. High protein. There's 14 grams of protein per serving. Low carbs. This specific flavor, apple cinnamon, has 
four grams of net carbs, no sugar, it's grain free, it's gluten free if you're worried about that. Um, yeah, so much good stuff about this, so many good flavors, definitely check it out. So if you're interested in getting this cereal, you can use my code Cracker for $5 off a variety box. Click the link down below, magicspoon.com backslash Cracker. get your $5 off your variety box. Best part, if you absolutely do not like the cereal, they will refund your money, no questions asked. So it's a win-win situation, but you're gonna love it. It's super flavorful and uh, very nutritious. So, all right, the weather is broke. I am done at the cabin. I need to get back down to the yurt and get the wall up, and then we're gonna take you on a quick property tour. School, pro I was gonna say school, school tour, property, school, uh, uh, tour of the property. So I do have the side-by-side -side I'm cruising around on, but the side-by-side -side is getting an overall um, at the end of this class. It's just going home to my house, to the garage, and we are going to fix it up. This thing, absolute beast from the day I got it. It pretty much lived out here in the woods, but the tires need to get replaced. It needs a good deep cleaning. The winch line broke, the windshield cracked, the rear tail lights cracked, the, the dump box is all busted up, but we, use this thing hard, so that gotta get fixed up too. There's just so much to do, so little time. So it seemed to make more sense to just go through the property as I'm driving, because I was taking the side by side down to the yurt anyway. So, uh, all right, so here's what we got. So, but the parking area, which, where is my finger at? See where the side by side's at? If you were ever at the school property, up through here where that like dirt looking patches, that is right next to the parking area. So opposite the parking area, I now cut out a big area of woods. And if you can see back there, that's gonna be home to the new TP camp. So here's the thing with the TP. So if you remember a while back, probably two years at this point, I set the TP up by myself, blew out my back, blew out other stuff. Um, the point being that it, it's tough to set up and take down. The worst part of the TP is the poles. They are so big. They're a nightmare. You can't transport them anywhere. The guy who brought it to the school property made this contraption on his truck. Absolute nightmare. The TP poles were in the barn, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute, and um, I had to do something with them. So I said, well, I'm just gonna set them up, and then there's one pole that if we need to, we pull it down, we put the TP wrap on and put it up. The reason I have the wrap on it is, is canvas and it's treated with a waterproofer, but I can tell you from all my other structures, being the yurt, the wall tent, tarps that we have had set up long term out here, that that thing was never gonna last more than a month or two, and I could tell it was already gonna start to rot. Now, not that it's low quality, it's just not made for long, long term exposure to the elements like this. So, we're just gonna keep the frame up, wrap it up, probably for the winter, Bushman class, we'll probably get this thing set up, pull it down, spring, summer, we have an event, throw it up kind of thing, but the poles are just gonna stay up here, and then we're gonna develop this camp out. So I'm super excited about that, make all kind of cool stuff. Anybody have any cool ideas for what we should have around this camp? You hit it up in the comments below. All right, now my favorite thing down here, okay, it might just look like a farm field. Yes, that's what it is now, but as you can see, there's machinery over on the side. No, I'm not starting an excavation company. I want nothing to do with anything like that, but we're gonna be putting up a big pole building with an outdoor classroom and an indoor classroom and a new office for myself. Ah, it's gonna be great. So that's gonna be going up um, in the next two months. So we'll have that set up. I'm super excited about that. We can actually store stuff inside. It's not gonna be sitting out all the time. Uh, just a more comfortable, nice teaching environment. So I'm super excited about that. So that is below the parking area. That's where that's gonna be going. And probably the most exciting thing, the most, ex at least for me, for everybody else, I don't think anybody cares. Right here is where that old barn was. I hated the barn so bad. It's gone. Like, look, nothing. It is gone. Not a trace, well maybe a trace, but nothing left. So when I first bought this property, the barn that was on the property is not a barn like you're thinking, like, hey, a nice barn, did you get any good wood out of it? It was literally just like 
over the years, somebody said, hey, do you want old lumber? Yeah, I'll take it and I'll try to screw it to what's here. Half of it was falling down. I attempted to rip the back half that was collapsing down. That was just a nightmare, just big piles of wood everywhere. The front of the barn, didn't look good. Uh, it was it was beyond imagine. Like, you can't imagine how bad it was. So for years, I was like, I got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. Finally, we got it out of here. So this area, I'm not sure. At one point, I was thinking make it a parking lot. Uh, I don't know. This is up in the air. I'm just happy it's down. I literally walk around sometimes, and I'm just like, oh, this is so gorgeous that it's gone. So that's all gone. So if you're ever at the school and you remember that old barn that the uh, Porta Johns were next to, it's gone. Not here. No more. <laughs> I'm so happy about it. And then one of the last things that we have been working on, which is. 75% done at this point is a new blacksmith shop so this is all stone on the bottom you can't tell now because the leaves are falling but once you rake this out this is all stone leveled out nice we put metal roofing on there which I'm in the process of finishing up should be done that any day um, I thought I'd have it done yesterday but of course like with anything you run into snags and it was uh, a lot of troubleshooting and just a little bit of work but I did get that um, at least started so that should get finished up here very shortly and then I got to build the walls up we're only gonna put half walls because you do want some ventilation and you want to be able to look out and realize you're in nature not like trapped inside some type of building um, so from there once those walls are up we could put our forges in um, Chuck who is helping out at the school has made five forges for us so they're brand new awesome blower forges so we'll have five forge setups in there plus my old antique one I'm gonna bring down from the yurt so we'll have six setups in there so technically we can run probably 12 people at a time um, at the blacksmith shop, which will be really, really nice for upcoming classes, which we have blacksmith classes listed on our schedule. But yeah, so we put that in. Um, Mike, my instructor Gasper, he uh, helped a lot with this. So uh, yeah, I mean, we are getting it done. And last and final, the project of this video, we gotta put the wall up. Around. Now you might be thinking, well, that is literally a piece of material. And if you guessed that, you're right. But here's the thing. We set this up up at the warehouse, okay? We wrapped the material around. We sewed it. So you attach the material via grommets. So the end of the material, it'd be better if I show you. So the walls assemble very easily. Once the yurt is standing, you take the grommet and it goes into the screw that's holding the door frame together. There are multiple of these grommets all the way down, okay? Um, and then, as you go around, there's literally just a loop like this goes over the top frame of the yurt. So you wrap this all the way around, which you're gonna see. Now, for some reason, when we did that, and then I brought it out here to set it up not too long ago. It was like three foot too long. I don't even know how that can happen. I can understand one or two inch measurements, but it was so extreme that I had to clip it in the back. It, it was not good. So we're gonna readjust that, okay? All right, so here's what's going on. Got the inside all raked out. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll, we can deal with it. But hey, super fun fact. Do you know that Dick Prennicky twice a year used to take all the stone out of his cabin floor, wash it at the lake, and bring it back twice a year? Imagine that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna wrap this around the yurt itself, and then we're gonna measure mark it with a marker, punch it, and put our grommets in. It's either gonna go really good or it's gonna go real bad. But I think if we take our time, we should be good overall. All right, so I'm gonna start here by attaching the yurt wall, okay? Once I get that done and in place, then I am going to get rolling from there. So let's get these in. take my loops that I already had on here and I just loop it up. So I roll it out, find a loop, 
stick it up over the frame. Very easy. Lots of extra, lots and lots and lots of extra. So we're gonna have to cut that down. Now, what I'm gonna do with this though is I'm gonna work back around, I'm gonna grab my, my bank line, because that's what the top tie outs are. And I'm gonna make sure that's nice and tight all the way around and adjust it at the right height. If you can see, which I know you can, because I can see my monitor, in the back it's sort of raised, okay? So we have to adjust that, make sure it's level with the ground. Um, and then we'll come around and readjust this here, find these holes, and uh, it shouldn't be that bad of a project. All right, so you check the bottom. The bottom looks good. I'm gonna come down and mark my grommet holes. Okay, so grommets are very simple to set. Um, you could buy grommet kits, Harbor Freight, Lowe's, Home Depot, any place like that. Um, what you're gonna get in there are a few things. You're going to get a gasket punch. This is going to allow you to punch the hole in the material for the grommet, so you'll get one of those. You're gonna get an anvil, and you're gonna get a setting tool. So you're gonna get those three tools. And then you're gonna get the top and bottom section of your grommet itself. So the front, or what I refer to as the top, looks like a small top hat. And then the bottom of the grommet looks just like a flat washer. And then what happens with these is they go together like this. The material gets sandwiched in between them and this top section here gets rolled over. So as you're gonna see here in a second, what we do is we punch the material and then we insert the hat style part of the grommet into the material. We place it on our anvil just like this, cover it with the top washer, take our setting tool, go inside, hammer down. So now what we're gonna do is I doubled this over because I had a lot left. So I'm gonna double this over, put my grommet in place. So the first thing, as I said, we're gonna cut the material. So I wanna set this centered. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our grommets, okay? and we are going to set this. So I want that part to the front. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to set this thing backwards just because we're doing it in the woods and it is what it is. So we're gonna set that in place there, put my flat washer on top, my setter on top of that. Grommet one in place. Now I'm just gonna work on down and uh, get these all done. All right, so a little tip here. If your punch that came with the set is somewhat dull, as this one is and I'm having a hard time, you can really easily take your knife and just create an X across your mark where you want to place your grommet. Okay, what that's going to do is that's gonna open up the material just enough. You can see I can fit in both ways. Now I can set my grommet through that just like that, okay? So that works just as well if your gasket punch is not working for you. So put this last one in place. All right, so that's all in place. Now what I'm going to do is cut this down with my knife without getting it too messed up. So we'll leave a little extra. Now, if everything went correctly, this should fit perfectly, which I think, looking at it already, I think that's going to be the case. So let me get this center one in first. Glorious, all done. Now I do have to finalize the bottom there, meaning I just got to put the grommets and the bolts, and I'm gonna go around, tie some extra strings around the top, but the yurt is back. It is whole once again with a brand new covering. The wood is all re-stained and uh, perfect. Looks so good. So um, I gotta make a door yet, and then this thing is called a witch's cap. This sits on top, um, it protects 
water and stuff from getting through. So although it looks crazy, it just needs a coat of paint. And I might, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna put a new, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Yet. That has to go up on the top. So I'm gonna get all that stuff squared away at some point here shortly before it gets too cold. No stove needed though at this point to warm out. All right, so there you go. That is today's project. That is the yurt almost completed. The tour of the school property and Dan's janitorial service in action scrubbing floors in the cabin. So um, that's what I got going on today. Um, I still have lots, it's not even noon yet. It's so great to get stuff done nice and early and finished. I have to still cut some wood and get all the class bins and stuff prepped up to the classroom area. But otherwise, I'm, I'm sitting good for the rest of the day to have a good, nice day. This weather, it's, it's gorgeous out. So I hope you get out and get some fun stuff done um, over the weekend and the next couple weeks, whenever. You get outside, you're gonna have a good time, I guarantee it. So uh, that's it. So check out magicspoon.com. I want to thank them again for being my sponsor for this video, Day Out with Dan. And then um, if you like everything you see here, hit the subscribe and like button below. And if you want some cool gear and come to some cool classes with all this new stuff we got going on, coalcrackerbushcraft.com. So until the next video, stay in the woods.